Welcome back to another episode of Excuse My Grandma. It's Kim and my co-host. Grandma Gail. All right, guys. We are joined by Jill Zarin and Ellie Shapiro. Jill, you might know best from being one of the originals on The Real Housewives of New York. We're also here with her daughter, Allie. Together, they've created the company Jill and Allie, selling crystal candles. We're going to get into all of that. Um, ladies, thanks for joining us. Thank, Thank you, you so much for having us. Okay, so we're going to start with your age, relationship status, and where you're currently living. And then say your name, uh, just, you know, so the the viewers, the listeners can know who's talking. <laughs> no problem. So I'm Jill Zarin, and I am 59 years old. This is my big year. Um, I am dating. I have a boyfriend. A serious relationship. I don't think I'm ever going to partner get married again. My partner, significant other, Gary. And I have a, a mom to Allie, my only daughter. I'm Allie Shapiro. I'm 30, so it's my big year. And I also have a boyfriend. And our boyfriends are friends. So oh, it's a lot of fun. Nice. Father to son way. Yeah. Yeah. Not weird. Not like buddies. Do you go on double dates? Yeah. We're going, We're going on, a- on a cruise together. The four of us. So it's going to be yeah. our first big vacation with me with a boyfriend, with mom with a boyfriend. So it'll be fun. Mm-hmm. What are you nervous about? Anything? Um, not really. I think we're going to have fun. Kill Gary, me, kill I, like, I say Gary, Gary is the most fun. I mean, everyone says that Gary's very funny. So he's always, ent- you know, if you, if you need to fill up the space, um, in a conversation, Gary will always entertain you. He's always a good person around the dinner table. That's very he's good. Yeah, Jill, I'm like that too. Like I want someone who can handle himself in a social situation without me needing to intervene. That's- and that's really hard to find. It is. And, um, and he likes it too. So I'm happy. Well, we say there can only be one peacock in the relationship. So mom's the peacock, definitely. but Gary lifts her up and I don't think overshadows her, but definitely has his own. Compete. He doesn't compete. Yeah. It's always, if I want to go, I do my thing and he sits back and listens. And if I'm exhausted, he can, we could just read each other. That's if I'm nice. not in the mood or I don't really want to talk to them, he'll just take Carry it on. Ali, what's your role in your relationship? Are you the peacock? I'm the peacock. I'm the peacock. He definitely supports me. And I think I always grew up embarrassed of like having anything to do with the celebrity or the housewives or being an influencer. I was always like embarrassed about it and kind of hit it, but he's very, very supportive and not like a, he's pushing her right in a, in a good way, not in, um, not in a jealous way, or he wants any spotlight. He's more of like encouraging. Like, I'm so happy for you. I'm so proud of you. Like you should be doing these things and get yourself out there more. So it's nice having like a Supportive, supportive partner but also like a best friend yeah yeah Very nice. that's, that's so wonderful. nice because we were literally just saying you were like when you're posting all these things like guys are going to look at that and not like well, it people in certain kinds of fields of work don't like to have their spouse having such notoriety it, it just depends what they do and how confident they are in themselves you know and if they're insecure if yeah. they're insecure yeah, if they're insecure well, and also sometimes the image isn't so great. I mean, you know, the influencer thing, and we are in that category, doesn't always ring such a wonderful signal to other people. But that's their problem, it. not our problem. Yeah. Well, you know what? It is what it is. So uh, not then he's not for them. Exactly. He's not for you. Mm-hmm. They You're- didn't answer your questions where they're living. Oh, all right. And come on. Let's we know their ages now, which is irrelevant. <laughs> and, and I thought we're the ones with the bad memory. Yeah. The gosh, <laughs> girls. Really good. I forgot that, too. I'm the one with the bad memory. Um, So I'm living right now. We are in Sag Harbor. I have a house in Sag Harbor. And um, I gave up my apartment in the city. And now I'm my main residence is Boca Raton, Florida. Okay. And we have a place in Miami, which Allie likes to go to on weekends. Well, so sure, I just, it's fun. Beach, so. And, Al, and Allie, are you, next, are you based in New York now, are, you know, during the winter or are you also in Florida? I'm full time in the East Village. I live, I live with my boyfriend, Okay. Um, which she doesn't love. But, you know, <laughs> circumstances are what they are and it's expensive to live in New York and we love living with each other. It's fun. You're well, also get boy- married. <laughs> I mean, if you love it's living with well, It's new. It's new. We're yeah. only- uh, I'm going to push you to get married. How yes. long are you in the relationship, Allie? Uh, we met a year and a half ago. Okay. So okay. about a year. Okay. Jill, why didn't you want her to move in? Like, are you more traditional with that stuff? Mm-hmm. Uh, very. And, and there were circumstances that I made it that um, cost me more money. But- um, I want Allie to be able to have her freedom. So though they live together, it is our, her lease. Um, okay. And I, you know, pay the rent or okay. she pays the rent because I don't want, and then he, 
he could pay for everything else, but I want Allie to have the freedom that if things don't work out, if whatever reason, a big fight, even if it's whatever, there's not an issue. They're not splitting anything. Yeah. Goodbye. It's actually- you know what I mean? It's actually really smart because I've had so many friends who live with their boyfriends and, and then they broke up and she was like, where do I go? Because the guy yeah. had the lease. Right. So, she had to leave. It was his place. But yeah. even in that case, it's like rather it be his place than their place together. Because if hard. it's together, you might as well have gotten married because now you have a divorce to deal with, splitting right. things. And I don't want that for Allie to have that pressure. Um, I'm not that mother. I'm not going to pressure her. I even said this to Allie, quite honestly, the uh, when we were talking, I said, you know, Allison, if you're not married um, by the time you're 31-ish, freeze your eggs. Don't have that pressure yeah. hanging over your head. Yeah. I don't yeah. want you to have to marry someone to have babies. I want you to marry someone because you love them. She's going to live to 150. You know, when you used to live to so, 50, that's right. it was now, different. It's different now. It was a whole different story. So now I don't want it to, you know, you do want them to be together the rest of their lives. Of course, you know, who knows life is, you know, life is life. George, you know. But um, I don't want her to have that pressure of that clock ticking um, and make a decision that she's going to have to live with the rest of her life. Al, you said this before, but like, what was it like growing up with your mom being on TV on Real Housewives? When we started the Real Housewives, it was very, very new territory. Um, very stigmatized, very stigmatized. And very. I was embarrassed. I was very embarrassed. I feel like I lost my friends. I didn't really talk about it. I think she was paranoid, but it was real to her of losing friends. I did. You really lost friends. We'll talk about it later. But yeah. <laughs> yes, she, yes, made, she did. She, she may have lost some, but she also made some no. that she never would have met. No, no. In high school, I lost okay. my friends. All right. In high school, I lost my friends. And in college, I never talked about it. Never came up. Like there was That's no... True. Like right now, if you do anything, it kind of lives on in so many other platforms and you can curate it however you want. It's on TikTok this way. It's on Instagram this way. Back then the episode aired and that was it. So right. I, I just ignored it. I pretended the housewives didn't happen. It aired. I hope some people didn't watch it. I never really watched it. And that was it. But now 15 years later, people are still watching those episodes when I was like 14 years old. Oh, every day on TikTok, it pops up a horrible haircut, yeah. terrible right. shit. No makeup. I mean, there's no question. I think all the housewives look better 10 years later than they did then. Absolutely. I always like when they go back and pass reunions and show like old clips, I'm like, how do they look better this reunion? And not, is it that they've gotten? Yeah. Tell me we why. Get, we didn't have hair and makeup. Wow. None. Definitely not me. And now because they get paid a lot more too, they still don't get hair and makeup during the season most of the time but they pay for it themselves and they know how important it is. Back then, you know, we didn't even know. We weren't well, glam squads now. Yeah, I mean, there was right. no there was no crib. There was no glam squad. There was nothing. So we we only got um, hair and makeup for interviews and for the reunion, if we were lucky. You know, we had, a, and we had to dress ourselves. We had no help. We still get no help, but it's just a different ball game. And then last night we were watching the New Jersey, I was watching the New Jersey Housewives and it came up that the new girl, the Jewish girl, Jen something, he, Andy Cohn says, I don't even recognize you. She says, I look in the mirror. I don't recognize myself. He goes, usually it takes a few seasons for the girls to, you know, do I'm things. And he, right. she's like, I had a facelift, nose job, and liposuction and lost like 20 pounds uh, on, on, I'm sure, Ozempic. So she doesn't even recognize herself. But that's what happens. The girls tend to, and myself included. I think that if I wasn't on TV, I may not have taken as good care of myself in terms of like, you know, Botox and all that stuff. Yeah, I feel like when you're looking at yourself all the time, like I'm sure it makes you want to do more of that. So, but it's not really just then getting your hair and makeup done. It is also like cosmetic procedures. I feel like that a lot of these people do that just completely like- Well, also some of them don't look very that. good after a while. Mm -hmm. yeah. Some girls lie about it. It's like Ramona says she never had anything done. I honestly don't know if she says that now, but that was a joke 10 years ago right. when she clearly- did some tweaking, but she was absolutely denying. But that's Ramona. You know, we love her for that. I think the trends changed. I think also the cameras got better. The better. production got better. That's I mean, the production compared even now from New York to Beverly Hills. You can't right. compare. It's so much better. The lighting. Mm -hmm. They have special um, lighting and filters on the cameras. Like they blast all the wrinkles away. It's so different. Listen, if Martha Absolutely. Stewart can be on a bathing suit thing at 80 years old or 81 years old, then they, they certainly oh, can yeah, fix up no everybody. Photoshop. 
Right. There was no yeah. Photoshop. Yeah, was exactly. They do a little <laughs> filtering all over the place. Yeah. We need filters. <laughs> uh, Jill, what were some of the positives and some of the negatives associated with being on reality TV and specifically Real Housewives? Number one is my brand. I mean, Allie and I wouldn't have a brand today. I mean, maybe we would, but we certainly wouldn't have gotten here as fast as we did. Um, Jill Zarin home. I have a rug line that's, you know, probably done a hundred million dollars since I started, which was about six years ago. Um, and growing, growing, growing. Um, it's probably one of the largest online, right? Brands. Yeah. Um, and I have furniture and we have an accessories line that we just launched. Um, and I just launched yesterday, Jill Zarin Beauty, which is a skincare um, with a UV defense mechanism so that you don't burn, which is all I care about. You know, skincare, I think there's just too many products, to be honest. gets confusing for me. I just need, give me one thing. Just give me one thing. I'm too busy. Um, and that's kind of what I built it around. And then, of course, Allie and I have Jill and Allie, which started as a mask company. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, we'd yeah, love well, to hear that. We'll start as a mask company. Then we converted it you know, into candles, crystal manifestation candles, which we could talk about later, but that's why that was the number one, two, three thing that it did for me. Um, so there were three, three, three reasons that I did housewives. One was to start, you know, to promote that two was to have a history of my family. It was actually to promote Zarin fabrics. So the initial was, reason back then it was yeah. Zarin fabrics. Um, and it was also to have a diary of our lives, um, and a historical, so I can go back and look at scenes with Bobby and my parents and you know as life goes on and people leave the planet I'll be able to still connect with them in a real way by watching you know episodes which I wouldn't have had um and what was the other reason there were three reasons I can't remember the third well, you, I made was, a long, you made TV. a lot of money <laughs> oh I made no money they did they not pay well on that housewives um in the beginning they paid nothing we got oh, seven thousand dollars the first oh season gosh. really of episodes yeah not an episode. You mean the entire oh, no. season? It's ridiculous. Oh, oh my gosh. I wouldn't even bother. Of course, it's more um, and then it went up a little bit from there. Unfortunately for me, I left before the money really right. started. Right. But they still aired those episodes. There's no um, royalties. People think there's, there's no royalties? Oh, that's And you know what's such a shame? They didn't pay children or husbands back then. Now they do pay husbands, I understand. Oh. But uh, Allison they was starting to get closer to 18. So I said, can Allison get paid? And they said, oh, we're not going to pay kids till they're 18. They filmed a scene with me a week before her birthday. And I thought that they would film afterwards. Right. And they never did. They didn't want to pay the money. Isn't wow. that interesting? And it's like with all of the success of Bravo, like that's pennies. Well, maybe not. not. It wasn't nice. We don't know their books. It was petty and it wasn't nice, you know, right. so. Wow. Um, it is what it is. I never did the show to make money on the show. I did it so I can make money without it. And right. I have to say, I'm probably the only housewife who ever really made a real brand after the show. Right. Because Darren Fabrics, I'm not involved in anymore after Bobby passed and went to his family. Um, so Allie and I, Jill Zarin Home and Jill and Allie all came years after the show. So I'm Oh, you mean after you're no longer on show like the air? Oh, that's right. interesting. And after her husband. 10 years right. after. Right, because I left the show in 2000, like 11, 12. Right. And my brand didn't really start until 2017. Mm -hmm. Really. And now but it gave you a platform. See, that yeah. was the whole I thing. It gave you a platform. Right. Like some people think I'm still on the Housewives. I would say a lot of people still think I'm on the Housewives because well, they, they would have liked you. Have, <laughs> they may not have liked the the show anymore because it changed a lot of people tell me they haven't watched it you know in a long time let's say in many seasons so they still think I'm on it because I'm well, still in the press I'm in the press, I'm promoting myself and you did ultimate girls trip which was like really recent as well so you have kind of still been in the Bravo universe I forgot about ultimate girls trip which was amazing and really helped some of the housewives get back on the air I mean three that I can think of actually got back on their shows um they asked me back to do um legacy but that didn't work out so um i, I feel really good was curious about legacy because i feel like they put out like a press release or something like people were talking about it they were aware of it oh, was it on page six and then okay <laughs> well people read page six and then i don't know what is it happening um they're doing an ultimate girls trip legacy that's okay. what they decided to do so but um, with new york only new yeah. york only okay but, but they're all kind of legacy. You know what I mean? Like every ultimate girls trip are, most of them are people who are off the show. 
So I'm not really sure what the difference is. Yeah. This, except Don't that you this think is he should move on. Don't you think he should on. move on? No, from people this. love the Do OGs. Love like if I could get New York Housewives season one cast back. I would not leave my couch. Really? Like it was that's so what they weird. wanted to do. Yeah. That, I don't that's, know. Well, I think Bethany won't do it. Right. So, um, and not for a lot of money and I wouldn't do it unless, you know, I also, you know, cause I didn't make any money when I right. did in the beginning. And I, to be honest with you, it's really not about money. It, it, let's put it this way. If I wanted to do it, I would do it. Right. Because I don't need the money. Um, so I don't really want to do it. But, so if I were going to do it, it has to be for the money. Right. But right. A lot of Does that make sense? Happened on that yeah. On like, screen. If you thought you were going to have fun and like catch up with the girls, that's one thing. But if you right. think it's going to be like I stressful. It, I would do it for a dollar. Right. Yeah. It's like going right, on I would a do it for a dollar. I think those circumstances. Exactly. But, the, but it's not set up that way. Right. Unfortunately. And the amount of anxiety it causes and her biggest anxiety is like, what am I going to wear? I need an outfit for every day. Oh my I need God. a hair. I need like, the whole thing just gets so much anxiety. And then the after effects is just. No, no, it's really yeah. drama. More than that, it's the drama um, with some of the girls, not all of them. Girls. Most, actually, women. Not most of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, Did you so, ever feel like really uncomfortable? Um, with any storyline when you were filming that like caused a lot of stress? Uh, yes, actually. Um, it was on ultimate girls trip when, um, but you know what? I don't even want to talk about it yeah. to be honest. It's, it's, it was bad. Can um, we talk about both of your thoughts on the cast for the new New York housewives? Have you like seen any promos for that? Yeah, I, we've- I've seen promos. We had lunch with two of the girls. I ran an Uber. Um, who, who were very sweet. Uh, I was the first one, pro- oh, I don't even know, first or only one, to reach out to them and to welcome them to the, even though I'm not even on the show anymore and haven't been for years, I still feel like as an OG, uh, the mother hen, it's just kind of the role I've always played. And I reached out to, I think all of them, um, just to welcome them, maybe not all of them, but some of them. And, you know, we took some out for lunch. I met them when, um, during BravoCon, uh, there was a, um, Watch What Happens Live, where they introduced the New York Housewives. And I was there um, and I welcomed them then and I got to meet them, most of them. So, uh, you know, listen, I'm excited for them. I'll totally be positive and good energy. Um, I don't know how it's going to be perceived, to be honest. I don't know how it's going to be received. Yeah. I feel bad for them because I feel like it could have been done a different way the way they would have had a, maybe a better experience. I think a lot of them are just getting a lot of pushback because they're not OGs, you know, and that's not their fault. Yeah. So I'm actually curious. Cause we're all like New Yorkers. Like when I was watching the beginning seasons, I feel like there was some mutual connections. I was like, Oh, Allie goes to a school similar to my school. We probably have friends in common. Grandma Gail knows some of the housewives, whatever. But um, I haven't like met or encountered these women. My mom hasn't either. I don't know if you even, you don't even know who they are. But they but are. like, that's kind of interesting to me because if they're real New York housewives, like why wouldn't we know them? I think that when my mom was the housewife, it wasn't, it was more of like a socialite. That's what they were. They were the socialites. And now yeah. it's more of like they're influencers. So I feel like that's the big difference. A lot of them are like creators, influencers, the young moms. They're right. all over TikTok, all over Instagram. That's their platform or her platform is like, it was a Hamptons magazine. Right. It was like, you know what I mean? It was, there were socialites. Um, and I think it would have been great if the cast was mixed. Mm-hmm. Like there was, there was only four New York housewives left and only a few of them. It could have just been like seven been housewives and a few guests. There was no reason to just start from scratch, but I guess- and they want to appeal to a younger audience. That would be my guess. Yeah. I mean, they're yeah. not interested in the 60-year-old girls. They want 30 and 25-year-olds. The other thing yeah. is that, uh, you know, I, um, I have fans, and a lot of them are like 20s. Yeah. And they so they were, they were like eight when I was on TV. So clearly they picked up the show during COVID or, you know, as they're older, they're going back and watching original episodes. Right. So I think that their dad is wrong. I think the young people, even though we're old, we took care of ourselves. They're still interested in Ramona and Luann and Sonia. Do you think Even so, though- really? I am. No, oh, I they got I, another I, show. I don't, so. I don't think so. Oh, I they got a spinoff. Luann and Sonia have another show yeah, coming Luann out. And Sonia, but let's see how they do. Let's see how they do. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be. I think the audience have changed. 
I really do. I, I, I really Listen, think. Ramon is how old? 66, 65? Yeah. You can't wait too long. No, she. No, we're not discussing. They're all very, very beautiful women and very accomplished. Uh, Maybe just, just what they're going through in what, life. Yeah, or... I don't know if it hits with with younger people what they're going through at this particular you know stage. Yeah, but if we'll anybody see. knows this, if anyone knows this, then us. You know who better? How many? How much drama has there been in my in our social circle? Does anything change from when you're in high school <laughs> to sixties? Really? I, you I'm say not all the time. You're like, these girls act like they're I'm in not high school. I'm not going to get into names, but I don't have to tell you. I'll just give an example with no particular thing in mind. A dinner party coming up on a Saturday night. You know, I ask if I can bring someone. No, you can't bring anybody. I'm kind yeah, of like, like kids, grazing kids you know, in the city, that kind of thing. The same shit. They all relate to it. So she's, this one's not invited and this one's not invited and this one was invited and don't talk about it. I'm having a party. Don't tell anybody. Nothing changes. And the kids love watching it and they learn from it. They learn how to respond or how not to respond. And they just love it. Nothing changes. You it really do that to me. You're like, no, I think certain things change. I, I think uh, I, you miss and I think the same issues are always around from time and forever. But I think people view things differently today. I'm not sure they're really interested in whether you have 18 vodkas for, before you go out to a party. Uh, you know, I think that it, it's very different. I think people are much more socially aware. I don't know about these influencers that they're doing on the show now. I don't know anything about them. Uh, but I would think there was a little more about kind is coming out in society over the air. I don't think I don't think the audience wants to see the fighting. I really oh my don't. god, you're so wrong. Well, that's you're why so I don't wrong. produce this show. <laughs> but I will I, say this: I would hope that like, they don't. That would well, be this my is what hope. I'll say. I'll say they want the fighting. They want the fighting, but yeah. they don't want it where you can't make up. Right. Yes, right. And Not what happens is it happens with me. When there's no makeup and resolution, the audience is very resentful. That's yeah, right. that's, that's right. so that's true. true. They want to see. Well and they want to see that's why the Kardashians has done so well. You that's know why? Correct. Because they kill each other, the but they wrap yes. it up at the end, and they're all friends. Exactly. Or, you know, family is family. Right. Mm -hmm. Although right. on New Jersey, blood is not thicker than water. You know, if that's mm -hmm. what's happening on that show, but you, but the audience wants it. The audience wants the brother and sister to make up. It's so true. And that's why like Andy has reunions because it's like, even if things were awkward at the end of a season, like no matter what, you're going to come back together, you're going to talk it out and it's going to be like resolved. But it doesn't always. And that's, that's a problem. And that's where your, your grandma's right. That's what Gail's right. The audience wants it cleaned up. Mm -hmm. yeah, they do, but they yeah. want the fight. Otherwise they don't want to watch like me getting the They yeah. like the excitement of it and they, they love getting involved in their lives. Do. They want to see us horseback riding or right, getting exactly. I mean, well, vicariously, to... they are living through you. I mean, we find that even with our conversation, people want to live our lives and they get involved. They really get involved with your personal life. Whether I, I fall on the floor, they want to know, is my leg better? I mean, you know, people do get involved with, with people over TikTok and social media and whether for right or for wrong, it's just the nature of the, of the was, space right now. I was telling someone the other day that the number one thing people ask me when they meet me in person is, how's your mother? Right. How's my sister and how's my daughter? Yeah, that's so nice. Yeah. Okay, ask me about a fight. Your personal life. Mm -hmm. right. They don't care about a fight or anything. They only, and my mother was on the show literally three or four times for three minutes. Right. And she resonated with the whole world. It's yeah. really amazing. But that's what people care about. That's they want to see care more about. glory. Correct. Mm -hmm. They want to see more family interaction, real. That's why the Kardashians, again, have done so well mm -hmm. because they know that's real. And they're very smart. <laughs> evidently they're very smart they figured it out they have a, a formula those girls Ali I'm curious like if your mom never had this tv stint would you be in a different place right now like would you have pursued a different type of career or do you think you still would have been entrepreneurial doing something kind of in this space no I, I did I um went to Vanderbilt I, think I went to school in Nashville and then I got a master's in art in London I wanted my own career. I made my own path. I worked in art for two years. Um, that was my life. Like I did not want anything to do with reality TV or influencer <laughs> yeah. stuff or anything. And then COVID happened and my company went bankrupt, went to Florida. We started tie dyeing mass, started then, a mass company. That was a great idea. And that was it. I mean, there was no going back. The company that I loved. There was no plan. It wasn't like a plan. Yeah. But no, I, I wanted to work in art. That was my like life's passion and my path. And you know, for good, for better, or for worse, right. It, it, it changed. Um, so now thank 
thankfully I had this to like fall back on, but it it's wonderful working with family and with my mom. Obviously, sometimes I wish there were like some boundaries, um, especially when we're together. It's tough. Um, we worked 24 seven. Like I was emailing from 2 a.m. Oh, to 5 a.m. I, I pick up my phone this morning. I get up at six, 2.30 in the morning. She's talking to not someone in China. She's talking to my uh, warehouse manager. Yeah. So it never at stops. 2.30 in the morning. It never stops. So when you work with family, work for yourself or, you know, it's, it's easier in some ways, but it's a lot harder in other ways. There's no boundaries. It's 24 seven. Um, and you'll never work harder than for yourself. So mm -hmm. that's true. Such a good point. I feel like we can relate never to that. Hard. And then what gave you guys the idea to focus on candles and specifically, you know, incorporating crystals and, and manifesting? Well, so we started with the face masks and they were very colorful, kind of like bringing light to a very, um, oh, heavy, tie -dye. tie dye. They were tie dyeing them. And it just got to a point where we're like, what's next? And we thinking about other products that we love and we love candles. We're obsessed with candles. So yeah, we made these candles, like positive messages, manifestations, affirmations that went along with what was happening at the time. I feel like manifesting got very trendy and everyone was doing it. And so were we and bringing light to like a dark situation. So, Here's so a pretty. love candle. The candles are beautiful. The box is beautiful. Thank you. This one's my favorite because I think um, you can do everything in life or whatever but if you don't my father always said if you don't have a little bit of luck you need a little luck mm -hmm. that's true for those who are just listening the candle says luck on it so what is the process like do you light it and then you like are supposed to think about how luck can be brought to you or what how do you like to think about those themes i'm sure Tell yeah and i mean if you think about candles it is a very <laughs> spiritual process right like all of our religions even birthdays you blow out a candle to kind of set your intention and your wish into the world. That's true. So yeah, I never thought of that's that. Good. That's good. <laughs> Put that on your website. <laughs> that's the first time you actually said that. I never thought oh, of that. Did you ever think of that? You're right. Oh, when you start to get a wish, don't tell anybody. It's a matter of two intention. master's degrees to figure that out. Yeah. <laughs> I never thought of that. Oh I'm still 60 years. Did you think of that? Yes. Anyway, so yes, you think of your intention as you're lighting it. You you don't have to say it. You can write it down. I'm not a journaling person, but people do write it down. They do. Um, and I feel like when it's lighting, it's kind of sending your intention to the air again, like a birthday wish. And you take out the crystals. So you have the crystal with you forever. Um, our creative director is about to give birth any day. She's nine months pregnant and she has like a bowl of crystals next to her bed and wants to bring them to the hospital with her. So it's a nice, like, mm -hmm keepsake um as your candle is done you saw these crystals that live on and these mm -hmm. crystals in a store would be anywhere from like five to 20 bucks like an amethyst would be more mm -hmm. expensive, or it's less um but we average you know priced it so they're all 45 dollars, and they last like 75 hours they smell we really loaded them with scent because we want people to to buy one and say I love this and I want to buy more. We don't right. want them to buy it and go, oh, I think, you know, it doesn't smell. Yeah. Sometimes candles smell really good on the top, but they don't put the fragrance throughout the way the through. And that's why they're $10 candles, you know, right. in store. So we have over 40 different candles and we're just now making like the same sayings in other colors. So maybe you loved luck, but didn't want it in green. Mm -hmm. So now you can get the green in pink and people ask us to customize their candle. We're like, we can't oh, do that okay. yet. Okay. Right? You know, as we expand, we'll be able to have different options. I think for scents, we initially started with what we love. So we love like high end luxury hotel fragrances. La Labo. La Labo, oh, Detik, uh, mm -hmm. The One Hotel. We um, we like, mimicked a lot of those fragrances. And then we have to do what our, our fans, our customers love also. So if you like more of a gardenia or a calming and scent, we, we try to have something for everyone. What are some of your, I guess, favorite things that you've created together so far do you have do you each have a favorite um not really I mean, probably pickleball paddles oh well, well in terms of or product, back to, or back yeah. to those pickle I like that pickleball. well you know I'm a big tennis player so when pickleball right. started I was like eh. and then I played it and I fell in love with it so mm -hmm. well, it'll be interesting to see they're building a lot of the courts. A lot of places really are starting to have pickleball mm -hmm. courts. We so played in Central Park in New York. It was so much fun. That's yeah, great. and the court that I have here um, has pickleball lines on it. So you can play oh, either nice. one. Oh, that's fun. Jill, yeah, since you've been spending time in Boca, do you feel like it's big there as well? And like, what are some of the other things you like to do there? Well, 
well, I live, I live in a place called Woodfield Country Club, and it was like the original, one of the original meccas for pickleball. It was, oh. it was like one of the starting places. So they the wanted best- to put it in East Hampton. It's very interesting. They wanted to put it in the parking lot, and people objected. Is there more noise to the pickle to the ball than the tennis ball? That's why? Um, I'm actually um, inadvertently in what directly involved in pickleball, the the whole sport from okay. like. Major- so I know a little bit of information. Yes, the the ball is loud uh, when multiplied by multiple courts. You know, one ball, whatever. But if you've got like three or four courts four going, courts. And it makes it very kind of a, like a ping pong, but very oh. loud. They're starting to develop other balls, um, testing rubber and things like that to That's see if it's um, just as effective, but not as loud. And then when you're in New York, do you have a spot that you like to go to together? Well, Favorite I restaurant. My, I, well, I stay with my friend, Julia Hart. I don't know if you know who she is or if you interviewed yeah, her yet. Yeah, yeah, um, Bacheva was, is, on is, podcast, was on our podcast. Yeah. She's got a chef. It's all set up. I don't have to leave. It's so nice she, there. Like, I'm born and raised in New York my whole life. She calls me the other day. She's like, have you ever been to Tribeca? Like, did you know there's this <laughs> restaurant and this restaurant? Like, Tribeca is so cool. Because she lives like, in Tribeca. I lived on the Upper East Side. I never went below 59th Street. So, <laughs> I mean, I don't say never. But it, you know how far it is. It's like an hour to get down there. So I would never go to Tribeca for dinner. No, it's that is the most relatable thing that's been said today because I feel like you'll do the yeah. same exact and thing. Now they're going to have congestion uh, t- pricing, so nobody below uh, above fifty. I think Fifty Ninth Street is going is going mm-hmm. downtown because they're going to charge. Well, but you truly pay. What do you? I have? thought they had it already, didn't they? No, it, it hasn't start. started yet. But it's oh. going. It's going to start soon. I don't know when, what the day, the actual date is. Maybe July, but it hasn't been put into effect yet. But Where do you live, Upper East Side? I live on the Upper East Side. Kimmy lives down in Chelsea. But no Nomad, Maybe. right? Yeah, Nomad. which is like I tried to pick someplace kind of in the middle because I'm constantly coming uptown and then I'm constantly meeting my friends downtown. But it is like I packed today. I packed a whole bag to come uptown. Like I'm moving, like going on vacation for a week. I want to end the episode with a game we play with all of our guests, Grandma Gail's old fashioned dating quiz. So we're going to go through some hypotheticals and then deem whether both of you are more of an old fashioned dater or more of a modern, modern dater. dater. So either her camp or mine. Um, okay. So the first one is, would you rather receive a call or a text from your partner if it's just to say hi? Jill has to answer first because, again, they're not going to know who it is. Text. To just say hi? Text. Mm -hmm. Okay. Allie, what do you think? I like a a phone call. Opposite. Opposite. Uh, Would you sleep with someone on the first date? No. Yes. Okay. Okay. Dating apps or setups? You know, I have to say, I didn't, when Bobby passed, I was, you know, I don't want to say looking forward to is the wrong word, but I was, you know, looking forward to doing the app because I had never done that in my dating life. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I got married very young. So um, Gary, you know, kind of jumped in there and squatted me and I never got to date anybody. So you fine. never made a profile? <laughs> No. And I really wanted to. So I think if I had and had the experience, maybe my answer would be different set up. But I was kind of looking forward to doing the swipe thing. That's so funny. Allie, did you ever do the apps? I did the apps. You know, my boyfriend now is my first like really serious boyfriend. So I did the apps for 10 years. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think I got successfully set up often. And meeting my boyfriend now was kind of a setup. So okay. I'm a bit, so I never would have met him on a dating app because he's much younger than me. Mm. So I w- he wouldn't have been in well, my range. Much, only two years. But but that's younger than my dating okay. app profile was. Right. So I think meeting someone in real life and a setup gives you more of like an opportunity of who you would meet than just the dating app. Because you might like have swiped and, not, and, and have missed someone, you know? Yeah. No, it makes sense. Um, would you move in together before getting engaged or wait until you're engaged or married? Well, we know the answers in. on this one. <laughs> I say if you're engaged, you can move in together. But not before. Not before. Well, Obviously, it didn't work out for me with Allie. Well, you're a hypocrite because you live with your boyfriend. You're not. Uh, well, is... but that's the second time but... around. She's entitled. But, <laughs> third, third time. Second time. But well, third time, um, third time think, she's definitely well, my entitled. My first husband, we got divorced. Um, and Bobby passed away. So that's why number three, I would have still been married if, if Bobby was right. here. Um, uh, what was I saying? I forgot living together. Yeah. Oh, um, yeah. No, if you're not having children, like in the second part of your life, right. Well, that's it goes all 
Mm -hmm. um, then I think it doesn't matter. I think it's really about children and setting examples and trying not to be a hypocrite and all that stuff. But we're all hypocrites, all of us, a little bit. Okay. Okay. And yes, I think you can move in. Yes. Okay. The last one is who should pay for the date? Should it be one person in a relationship or should you alternate split? I'm old fashioned guy has to pay, but that's not this generation. I think guy has to pay until you're at a certain point in the relationship. When you're like a year in, I don't think you can expect your boyfriend or girlfriend to pay for every single meal all the time. I mean, that adds up. I think if you're in a relationship, all it's those things are on the table to yeah. share. But I think what they're talking about is yeah, in, the in the beginning. In the beginning. The important mm-hmm. part. Um, yeah. yeah, the person that's courting should pay. Friend, Suzanne, she went out on a date, really rich guy from Westport, Connecticut. And they went out on a date. She, I think, went up to Connecticut to have dinner. And she went home. She thought everything was okay. Do you know that either sent her an email or he called her up and like yelled at her that she didn't offer to split the check? Oh, wow. Can him. <laughs> that would have been bad. Can him, shoot him, put him down so he doesn't do that exactly. to anybody else. Do this else. to somebody else. Yeah. Dog, shoot him down. Um, yeah, I couldn't believe that this successful guy, 60 years old, expected another successful woman to split the check. Bad, and bad had choice of going. That she him. would even think not to. Right. Something's wrong with him, and his he's widowed, so clearly he's going to get checked. <laughs> no, somebody will find him and say you pay for it a couple of times, and they'll, then he'll they'll marry him, and then he'll be paying. They get all his money. I don't know exactly. So you're half and half, both of you. Yeah, I think it was like maybe three out of five though were more on the traditional side, but pretty split. Pretty split. Yeah, which is what I would expect. Yes. What do you um, guys? or different she's traditional and i'm like pretty half and half also but more a little bit more modern um but we're, we're more modern all the she's time she's becoming more modern and i'm becoming more <laughs> old-fashioned you're switching roles yeah. as as we progress with this relationship mm-hmm. uh, well thank you both for joining us tell everyone listening where they can follow you get all your products everything you want them to know Yes, jillandally.com for crystal manifestation candles and pickleball paddles and jillzarin.com for her rugs, furniture, all that fun stuff. And I'm at Ali Shapiro, at Mrs. Jill Zarin. I also just wanted to say we just launched our rugs, washable rugs for outside, and they are so much fun. They start at like $49. It's cheaper to buy that and take that to the beach than like a towel. You know, and it's much prettier, better for photos because everybody's about the photo, the Instagram. Mm-hmm. Um, like some of them have lemons and fruit, like really, so really fun palm leaves, like the like the hotel that we were just looking at, like the um, Beverly Hills Hotel. And then, you know, my indoor outdoor rugs are really what people absolutely love and need at this time of year. And they are on sale. So, Ali, I think we're doing an additional discount on our candles. Yeah, can we a code for you guys? The EMG20 on JillAnally.com. Everything will be 20 off and we have things on sale. It'll be also on top of the sale. So that'll be great. That's amazing. Thank you guys. So now you get a little bit of a discount if you want to head over to their website for everyone listening, EMG20. Um, Thank you both so much. We had so much fun. Another great episode of Excuse My Grandma. Rate us five stars wherever you're listening. If you don't always already follow us on social media, we're Excuse My Grandma. So look that up on Instagram and TikTok. We'll see you next week.